Hello and welcome to Lesson 3 of Engineering Design Graphics, Orthographic Projections 1. Today we're going to talk about pointers for how to draw a good design orthographic projection and limit ourselves to front, right, and top views. Now, let's take this door latch mechanism. First, we're going to observe it closely and determine that it's not necessarily an easy thing to draw in three dimensions. Part of that's the curvatures on it, and part of it is that it's a set of interrelated parts, and I want to show those interrelationships clearly. Let's begin with drawing our construction lines all the way across the page. You use large sweeping motions include a center line line type. If you have a center line, like in this case, uh, the object is bilaterally symmetrical, so that center line is going to be very useful to me. Then look for proportions in the object you're drawing and try to capture those proportions. I'm going to take my time with the layout lines for the front view, because this front view is going to become the model from which I can bring a number of lines across to my side and top views. So taking my time pays off because it locates all of the significant features, or at least all that are visible from the front, and allows me to align those features with their side and top views in the corresponding projection drawings. Take particular care when you are locating circles and holes because these tend to be significant um, moments when we are dimensioning a part. They often describe how one part relates to another. As I begin to get these things right, I slow down and find some of the smaller parts and pieces, both the geometrical subdivisions and the irregular shapes that make up particular things like these mounting holes, uh, the top and bottom of the latch body. Um, I turn the corner and ease my pencil around to find the shapes and where there is a angle, I show that angle with a light line. Uh, I'll come back to that when we get to the emphasis and shading. Now, as I work my way through here and get the rough outlines of the front view, I'm going to pretty quickly move uh, up from there and draw the uh, top view, and then I'll work over to the right. You can see how my hand is covering the right side of the page fairly often. Uh, so I want to draw that side last because I don't want to muddy up the, the pencil lines with a lot of rubbing back and forth with the heel of my hand. And now I'm going to erase some of my little notes here and go back over my construction lines and bring them back to the surface. As I do that, I will take more construction lines across as I note that those particular things need to be located on the uh, right side. So I bring the lines across from the top or from the side. Now once that work is complete, I'm going to switch pencils and go back and begin to find my emphasis and profile lines to locate the particular parts of the object. I may go back and bring my center lines through to remember where those go and make sure they align. And I will add the rest of the details of the object as I find them, as I work through the, uh, the top view, bring them through and locate them on my right view. Often, I find that as I work through a drawing, particularly my soft or darker uh, pencil tends to get dull and lends the drawing an air of imprecision. So I, when I get to this point and I really want to pull out the emphasis and profile lines, I'll often go back in, resharpen that B or 2B pencil, and uh, make sure those emphasis and profile lines are clear, sharp, and dark. Then I will work my way back through the rest of my drawing, 
including the front and top sides, and really make sure those emphasis lines are clear and pop. This is also a time that I may want to start using some shade and shadow, particularly in the case of curves uh, or surfaces that don't have a clear linear break between planes, that shading in a, in a design sketch can be very informative and can tell you things that you couldn't have described clearly with line work alone. The more immediate and exploratory the sketch, the more likely we are to use these impressionistic modes of drawing. If we're drawing a more time-consuming analytic drawing, we may stick purely to line work and we may move into pen, and we will get to that later. For now, remember that when you shift to shading and shadow and creating uh, the impression of depth and curvature, you want to use the broad side of the pencil, create uh, a field of tone using uh, wide, even strokes, rather than creating something that is very scratchy or liney with a lot of white space between your shade. So I'm going to go back through and make sure any last uh, profiles are clear and communicative. And then I'm going to get out my eraser and clean up any smudging that's occurred in the drawing, as well as errant construction lines and other things that will distract from the clarity and communicative power of the drawing. Lastly, I will sit back and take a look at the drawing and make sure there isn't any other key information that I want to communicate, whether that is notes, dimensions, center lines or other attributes that uh, help to describe this particular mechanism. Those moments can be the key part of the drawing because they tell us why we did this drawing in the first place. Remember before you go to label your drawing with the name of each view and the orientation and any other uh, descriptive information or titling that the drawing is, uh, that is apropos of the drawing. That's all for now. Practice, 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 and we will see you next week with part two of Orthographic Projections. Thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.